Okay, uh, thank you for joining us for the seventh edition of the uh, BFT webinars. And my name is uh, Roy Kennedy, and uh, I'll be hosting us today. At the end, I'll be joined by Pablo Hernandez, who is uh, our technical support guy, or one of our technical support guys, based in Florida. Hello, hello. Uh, are you there, Pablo? Yes, sir. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so my name is Roy Kennedy. Like I said, I'm the Vice President for Sales and Marketing for BFT Americas. Pablo's going to be joining us. Today's presentation, the seventh edition, is about pedestrian speed gates. Uh, we'll cover the features and benefits of the pedestrian speed gates, the market sectors in which to target, uh, the configurations, and some options. As usual, we ask you to save your questions to the end. Um, all of these will be recorded and added to the BFT America's YouTube channel. So, apologies for those who've seen this before, uh, but for those that you haven't, uh, why BFT? BFT are the fourth largest gate automation manufacturer in the world. We're actually a subsidiary of the Somfy Systems uh, company, which is a billion dollar plus manufacturer of home automation, motorization and access. You can check out what they do at somfysystems.com. Obviously, uh, sometimes there are some similarities between the business that you are currently doing, and, and this may be something that you can add on. You can always ask myself or Scott uh, Fliggy, the national sales manager, for, for any details on that. Predominantly, they, they deal with the automated shades, blinds, curtains, awnings, screens, roller shutters, smart homes, and controls, which is very, very popular. BFT is a business. is headquartered out of Skio based in northeastern Italy in the foothills of the Alps. Um, it's got about 20 subsidiaries around the world, many more distributors, which we'll cover shortly. Uh, we were founded in 1977, have been present in the US since 1990. So the subsidiaries, um, we have actually 530 distributors in more than 120 countries worldwide, so a really good spread, uh, which means you should be able to find our products pretty much anywhere you go. Uh, the headquarter in Italy uh, has 35,000 square meters, just a little over 100,000 square feet. Uh, it's quite a big place, and currently we're just short of 500 employees worldwide. About just over a year ago, we moved to a new uh, facility in Boynton Beach, which is purpose-built for us, uh, which incorporates a 40,000 square feet uh, warehouse, Fantastic office facilities, great training facilities you can see in the center image. And hopefully when all this is over, we'll be able to invite you down to do some hands-on stuff. Uh, for the meantime, though, you've got us on the webinars. Okay, so what did BFT do? Um, like we mentioned earlier, very few people know that we're actually the fourth largest gate automation manufacturer in the world. Uh, we have a, a full range of swing gates operators which will be in the electromechanical and hydraulic, and that is also in ground and above ground. Uh, so pretty much we can accommodate any size or sort of gate that you've got. Uh, we specialize in slide gate operators from small uh, residential operators right up to full commercial industrial slide gate operators. Uh, barriers, again, uh, 10 through 26 feet, ranging from you know light use up to uh, heavy industrial use on things like toll roads um, across Europe and, and uh, the rest of the world. We also specialize in automatic preventative and anti-terrorism rated bollards. I know that uh, over the next few weeks, Scott and I will do a webinar on our bollard range because it's little known and actually there's, a, there's an awful lot of them. Um, we also do, as you, you guys well know, cellular systems for residential and commercial applications, cellular video intercoms, and then more recently, pedestrian speed gates, something that we showed at uh, Fence Tech in Salt Lake City this year. Um, technical support is really important with anything that you purchase. Um, based out of Florida now, we have three, four guys, sorry, based out of Florida. Uh, a guy up in New York, and for our access control predominantly, um, we have, you know, a large number of people based in Ireland. We did actually add an additional tech support representative in March 2020. So the focus of today's webinar is the PG300, pedestrian speed gates. Uh, PG standing for paddle gates, because it's effectively what they are. There's a, a reason that we, we've decided to, to do this, this product, and, and that's because when my, my time back with BFT, I spent, uh, it's my 13th year with BFT, 
and uh, 12 of those I spent over in Europe and uh, predominantly in the UK we have some very cold winters and what we found was our gate guys during the winter their business really really slow so they were looking at a new avenue in which to keep busy throughout the colder months when there's snow on the ground and uh, you know heavy rains wind etc so this seemed like a natural product for them to move into so let's let's move on with it this today is just an introduction to the pg 300 pedestrian speed gate range uh, literally this is an opportunity for one of the first people in north america uh, to learn about this and uh, to get some idea, ideas uh, where to start uh, adding it where to look for opportunities for it uh, and hopefully it'll fit in with your range of products so an overview this is what the products would look like that's actually two lanes so there's just some some bullets around there we'll talk around them the access control reader it's fitted under the uh, acrylic there, like a teardrop acrylic and we'll cover the, what's underneath that a little bit later on so obviously giving you access in and out the gate leaf uh, multiple size on that range from three feet up to five and a half feet to stop people you know wanting to jump over it uh, control panels located within the unit with some of our competitors a control panel is is, is uh, located satellite to the unit so it makes it very difficult to set up and uh, the, the cabinets themselves are made out of high quality 304 stainless steel uh, anyone who's seen that fence that couldn't believe the, the quality of the finish on there very important is the safety sensors with this product the safety sensors both top and bottom which is 16 in total um, I'll cover why that's important a little bit later on uh, okay so I want to show you now uh, an installation example um, of what this looks like installed so many people can't visualize where this will be and this gives you a really good idea of, of the sort of places that this can be installed this one is like a, a corporate entrance to a building uh, but we'll cover some more market sectors shortly so market sectors uh, these you probably walk through a lot of these you are actually realizing you've you know you've seen them or you've passed them without realizing you've seen them daily these things have been installed uh, across Europe and America in so, you know places such as corporate offices uh, sports and entertainment facilities gymnasiums being one of the most popular ones government buildings uh, banks financial institutions the industrial sector uh, which was very popular in Europe the industrial sector uh, it was installed in many distribution warehouses in order to stop shrinkage people walking out with the product uh, corporate offices that get sorry corporate offices duplication clinics and hospitals uh, hotels and restaurants museums shopping malls supermarkets ports and airports I'm sure we've all used them at an airport where you you know you scan your boarding pass and walk through and public transportation hubs as well so the configuration of these the PG 300 range consists of four standard walkways so nothing too complicated you've got which we'll cover in a, in, a, in a short moment, you know, slide by slide. So one important thing to remember with the PT300 range is it can be configured in any combination. This is really, really important when it comes to quoting the product. The reason that I say that is you can see the PG300 uh, is a, you know, a standard uh, double lane. And if you were to quote against someone, quote in double lane and you use you can see in the middle there uh, a 302 then the 302 with having one motor rather than two will always come out more competitive and may just give you an edge to win the project so we'll cover the lanes individually now so there's a 300 it quite literally is a double leaf lane providing a two foot clear walkway and that would be for you know an, an average Joe who's able-bodied and can just walk through there The 301 is a double leafed uh, lane again, but providing a three foot clear walkway. Predominantly this is used for people with a wheelchair. So this will be for wheelchair, standard wheelchair access. The 302 is what we discussed earlier. Again, it's a standard two foot clear walkway, but a single leaf. So in terms of quoting and being competitive on a job, this often is a good solution. Whereas if your competitor is quoted a double leaf, Obviously, you're going to be uh, at a price advantage using a single leaf because there's only one motor per lane as opposed to two. And then an anomaly one, really. This is something which is, uh, for me, a fantastic idea. This is the 303. It's a single leaf 
uh, sorry, a double leaf lane providing a three and a half foot clear walkway. And this is predominantly built in mind for people using the sports wheelchairs, which is the, the wheelchairs with the camber uh, on the wheels. They're slightly wider than the standard wheelchair. Really, really important for things like access to a gymnasium where it's maybe a members only. Um, this sort of thing means that you can still facilitate the, the gym's request. Okay, so looking at some, some features within the product now. The redo integration, underneath that acrylic teardrop, this is what you'll see. Uh, this fits most standard uh, readers, like your Paxton, Honeywell, etc. whatever it is that you, you, know, you would come across uh, on a building. It's really important that we be able to fit other people's uh, readers in there and not just put our own in. Uh, because if the building's already kitted out with uh, Honeywell readers from top to bottom or Paxton readers, simply is a case of putting a controller inside the unit and adding the reader and then everyone's card that already works in the building will work on the speed lane. Uh, functional indicators. What may seem very apparent to us uh, isn't apparent to a, you know, an untrained or uneducated user. So in the, the dormant position, it will just be blank. Once the, the keys you know, or your card is presented or key fob, um, it will give you the green arrow indicating to move forward. If it's not accepted, it will give you the red cross. In addition to that, on the center where the gate leaves are hung, there's also more additional indicators, giving you an idea of whether you're good to go or whether you have to stop. Um, various types, uh, sorry, the, the, there's uh, some PT300 options. So there's, there's lots of option lectures on this. It really is down to what the client is looking for. So various types of obstacle material. What do we mean by that is the gate leave. So standard day will come with uh, three feet high plexiglass, so like a perspex. But you can have, you know, up to five and a half feet, and that can be toughened safety glass, laminated toughened glass, whatever really the customer is looking for. You can also uh, emboss company logos, etc., within the glass. Uh, as it says there are various glass heights we spoke lane widths uh, and obstacle heights if you've got something that's outside of the standard parameters do give us a shout you know we're happy to try and make uh make you know the the, the customer's uh, dream a reality if you if you talk to us we can usually get around it one way or another uh, four additional safety sensors are uh, available this would be for things like the wheelchairs so it picks it up on the on the initial way in and the initial way out. Uh, bespoke redo integration, which we've covered, auxiliary relays, uh, reception controls, which I'll cover shortly. Uh, surface mounted base. This is really really important. Sometimes these are installed on a, a corporate entrance, let's say, or a, a banking facility, or even a gymnasium where they've got a really nice uh, marble or granite floor, and they don't want you drilling into it. So we're actually able to offer you a raised walkway, which means you can hide the cable underneath it and, and that will be where you mount the operators to, uh, the actual cabinets themselves. Okay, so um, again, later on, uh, probably within the next you know, five or six weeks, we'll do a more detailed one and we'll, we'll cover that again. Today's really just an introduction. Uh, we also offer a drilling template as well, so installation is easy and simple and there's no mismeasuring, uh, so it goes according to plan. Some other options, uh, a touchscreen reception control. So this would sit behind reception, much the same as the installation we looked at earlier. And uh, if you're authorised, you're a visitor with an appointment, then the receptionist or security or whoever is manning the, the reception area, at a touch of a button can open the gates and let you in. Okay, so... Briefly, why PG300? So the aesthetics, let's go to the aesthetics first. It's, it's a transparent, elegant design. It really does look nice. Uh, hopefully you saw that on the installation picture earlier. A compact footprint. Many of the, the products that I've looked at that are in the US market uh, are very big and bulky. Uh, not necessarily the best looking products that, that, that I've seen. Um, discrete card redo integration, which we've covered. Uh, orientation and functional uh, pictograms to assist the user. Like I say, it's not always apparent to the, to the end users. We, we live this industry, so what is to us, not necessarily is to them. The design of the product uh, is very flexible, combining two, three, three and a half foot uh, 
uh, openings for sports wheelchairs, fire regulations, um, high quality 304 stainless steel finish. Uh, you really have to feel the weight of these things to believe them. They are very, very good quality products. Uh, they offer a long life si cycle with uh, low maintenance costs. There really is two brushless motors uh, and a control panel, so there's not an awful lot uh, to go wrong. Safety, low level detection uh, sensors for extra safety fitted as standard. So along the top of the products where the, the carbines are, there's a full row of safety cells there and again mirroring that along the bottom and the reason that, that we do that is let's just say for example you have a an infant or a carry-on bag or you know something like that which doesn't hit the top sensors so if you go through it sees you've gone through it closes the gate on either your bag or an infant so to to address that there's low level safety sensors as well really really important uh, in the event of a power failure the gates can just be simply pushed open uh, there's a fire alarm input in there, so it would link to the fire alarm in the event of the fire alarm going off, again, the gates would open. So it's, it's very safe. Um, optional detectors, uh, detection sensors for the trolley protection or, or, or you know, infant. Security. Uh, one of the things that we come across is people say, well, you know, people can jump over it. At five and a half feet, you're not jumping over it. Uh, having seen those, that's, that's a pretty big ask to jump over it. Um, and also underneath... Uh, the, the sensors are there to detect people trying to crawl under uh, or tailgating or wrong direction of travel. You'll be surprised how many times that happens. So today we've covered the PG300 briefly, but I wanted to also let you know that we do have other options. So within our range of pedestrian gates, uh, we do offer, you can see starting from the left, retractable gates, which is sort of like the, the cheese wedge style gate that comes out. Uh, they've got a pretty wide footprint because obviously the gate has to retract into them. Then there's the glass gates, which you can see in the middle there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great option, it's a very uh, competitive price option. And then the tripod turn style. We tend to uh, not do as much with the tripod turn style. There's so many uh, cheap challenger brands out there, but it is available from us if you'd be interested in the quotation. I'll touch on this, uh, but we will probably do a separate webinar all together on these. Um, coming very soon, we're actually looking right now at, at the, the best options for us in terms of support, software, reliability, etc. We're looking to integrate our product range with the facial recognition, some of which will have a temperature control. Uh, in light of the current pandemic, I think you know, contactless entry will become our new normal and our new way of getting in. I, for one, certainly don't want to be touching uh, anything if I can help it. So this is something which we were going to integrate it today, but it just would go on and on and on. So this is going to be a separate webinar topic altogether, which we'll cover probably in the next couple of weeks, I would have said. So we've got a range of them there, ranging from uh, seven inch to two and a half inch, uh, five inch handheld, temperature controlled, non-temperature controlled. So it's going to take a little while for us to get that together uh, and find the right products at the right value. So let's, uh, we'll revisit that a little bit later on. Okay, so that is a very, very brief overview of the, the PG300 and hopefully gives you an insight as to how it came about, where you could potentially sell this product, uh, the uses for it, um, but like I say, that predominantly this was born out of installers in the, the colder uh, climates looking to keep business high during the winter months. And I know uh, in the US, the, certainly the north of the country, you know, gets very, very cold during the winter months. So hopefully this will help. Um, all webinars uh, that we do will be uploaded to the BFT YouTube channel, hopefully later on today, but at the latest probably tomorrow. Uh, next week, my colleague, Scott Fliggy, is going to cover the Juno. We did do that a few weeks ago, but unfortunately Zoom uh, made a mess of our recording. So we're going to redo it for the benefit of getting it up on our re YouTube channel and letting you guys see it. Fantastic operator. Um, got all the features, but I won't steal Scott's thunder for next week. Okay, questions. We'll open it up now for some questions if you want to enter them into the chat box. Uh, myself, my colleague Pablo uh, will answer them as best we can. If there's something that comes up after the event, please feel free uh, to email myself at the email address there or give me a call at the phone number. Or again, Scott, the National Sales Manager, his email is there and his number. 
Okay, so I am happy if people want to ask any questions. Um, I would invite you to do that. Do you see, do, I'll ask the first one, do you see this fitting with your, you know, your current skill set? Is this something that you feel you could do? See another question there of you can etch a company logo into the panel yes you can yes onto the glass you can um, you can have whatever you like in there right i believe uh was there also a like backlit uh for these uh plexiglass panels uh where basically it kind of glows actually it's the 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 functional indicators on the center that we, we spoke about earlier where the gate leaves attached, they actually put the glow across the, the panel. Okay, uh, so Eric's asked a question, is everything ADA compliant with proper documentation if requested? Eric, it's a very good question. Yes, is the answer. We are currently uh, putting this. It's actually in the UL lab now uh, for testing. So it will be fully UL compliant uh, very, very soon. We're hopeful within the next few weeks, six weeks, maybe. Uh, it just depends on uh, how quick things are working with the, the current pandemic and the, what sort of um, you know, level of staff are available to, to do the UL. question very good question i'll follow up eric with you with a, an email in the coming days i'll do some more research on it and i'll follow up with you with some some more uh, some more answers any other questions guys is there anybody that thinks this that this won't fit with their current uh their current uh business model Uh, Eric, okay, no, not made in the USA. It is designed in the UK, which is where I came across it, and is manufactured out of China. Much the same as you know, uh, an Apple phone or Samsung phone or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's designed uh, from a guy that I know really, really well. He's been in and around this industry for about 30 years. Um, and he got fed up of installing other people's equipment, designed his own had it manufactured in China. It's been you know, a success story across Europe. So I'm pretty sure you guys can replicate that in the USA. Any I see he questions? asked also he could, if he could quote it to federal customers and I don't see why not. Um, I don't know if you saw that second part of the. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't see why not. I need to check uh, in terms of uh, UL compliance and some timeline for you, but I, I will do that for you, Eric, and come back to you. No problem at all. Because I'm sure that's the first thing they'd ask for. Of course. So if there's no other questions, um, we will pause this here. Um, I'll load it to YouTube so you can read it back uh, to your heart.